How's it going, guys? We have a difficult question for renal. A nearly identical one shows up on one of the new 2CK NVMe forms, although this is absolutely fair game for step one. So I'll cut to the chase. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at Melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now let's start the clip. 10-year-old boy, he has a 12-month history of wetting the bed at night. He's had increased thirst and urinary frequency during this time. The episodes occur every two to three weeks and last one to two days. There is no bedwetting between episodes. His parents divorced one year ago. He is at the 97th percentile for weight and 60th percentile for height. Laboratory studies show serum glucose is normal at 80 milligrams per deciliter, should be 72 to 99 for fasting glucose. Fasting glucose 100 to 125 milligrams per deciliter is, imp is called impaired fasting glucose or prediabetes 126 or greater on two separate occasions for fasting glucose is diabetes mellitus. Any one random glucose 200 or greater is also diabetes mellitus or an HbA1c of 6.5%. Urine glucose and protein are both negative. Urine specific gravity is 1.015. Very fucking weird scale for USMLE, okay? It's gonna run from 1.000, which is hyper dilute, up to 1.030, which is hyper concentrated. So questions asking most likely explanation for these findings. So let's just walk through the answer choices. Choice A, beta islet cell apoptosis with ensuing fibrosis, wrong fucking answer. This would obviously be diabetes mellitus, which this kid doesn't have because he has normal serum glucose and it's negative in the urine. Okay, I mean, you're going to have elevated serum glucose and you will have glucosuria if this is DM. Okay, and although increased thirst and urinary frequency and is heavy weight, okay, I mean, that could be type 2 diabetes mellitus. It can occur uh, as early as 10, absolutely. Okay, even though that sounds unusual, absolutely in Western countries and on pediatric forms, uh, it can occur early. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, diminution, which is a fancy way of saying decreased, diminution of hypothalamic production of vasopressin, aka ADH, as well as impaired sensitivity of medullary collecting ducts uh, V2 receptors, so for central and nephrogenic DI respectively, both wrong fucking answers, okay? Now, albeit increased thirst in urinary frequency and uh, the urine-specific gravity here, not overwhelmingly dilute, the reason why we can eliminate DI is because it's not occurring all the time, his episodes of bedwetting and his increased urination and thirst. It's not all the time. If you have DI, if you literally have a impaired sensitivity at the kidney to ADH or impaired production of vasopressin at the hypothalamus, obviously stored in the posterior pituitary, you would have a continual pathology. So the fact that this is episodic is our big clue that this isn't actually DI, okay? And similarly, uh, increased aquaporin insertion could be uh, well, actually, this could occur in the setting if we had SIADH. So if, it, if we had increased ADH, that would lead to increased aquaporin insertion in the medullary collecting duct. Also wrong fucking answer, okay? not And the pathology, not only would you not have increased thirst in urinary frequency, that's not how SIADH presents, uh, but uh, episodic as well, okay? SIADH is going to be uh, usually small cell bronchogenic carcinoma, but you should know that uh, both central DI and SIDH, that's central and etiology, can both occur due to head trauma as well as meningitis, okay? Even uh, tumors that uh, impinge on the hypothalamus, okay? So correct answer here is increased water consumption. The diagnosis is psychogenic polydipsia, all right? Now, they don't give any information about serum sodium, okay, or serum versus urinary osmolality, they don't do that. In psychogenic polydipsia, you should have a low urinary specific gravity, okay, it should be actually down around 1.000 to 1.005, not my fucking opinion, okay, this is what's on the NBME exam, and once again, they don't give you the serum sodium or osmolality, which should both be low uh, for comparison. Okay, if you have a down arrow for serum osmolality and serum sodium, you have a down arrow for 
uh, urinary specific gravity slash urinary osmolality, that's obviously psychogenic polydipsia. They go the same direction, but we don't have that comparative information here. That's why this is a difficult question. If we have SIDH, we're going to have concentrated urine. Okay, so we'd have a high specific gravity for the urine, 1.025 to 1.030. Uh, increased uh, urinary osmolality, and we have, we'd have a decreased serum sodium below 135, no equivalence per liter. If we had diabetes insipidus, we'd have dilute urine, okay? Uh, so low specific gravity, low urinary osmolality, and we'd have uh, increased serum osmolality, okay? Increased serum sodium. So once again, we don't have that comparative information, makes it a difficult question. And I should point out that the cause of the psychogenic polydipsia here is the divorce, okay? So, uh, I mean, it's it's not uh, coincidental here, right? That the episode started 12 months ago and the parents divorced 12 months ago. Okay, so I probably should have pointed that pointed that out earlier, but that's the cause of the psychogenic polydipsia, stress. Okay, so there's a lot we can talk about. I'm not going to make this an extended clip. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.